So this year's NAM just happened over the weekend, and there was a bunch of announcements. Maybe not the best year for NAM. I was kind of expecting a little more. But let's go through the things that did get announced. First, we have Alex Lifeson of Rush is partnering with Godin to release the Lurks, Lurax-X, Limelight, which is a new take on the legendary Hentor Sportscaster, which I'm not super familiar with, but it is a Strat-type guitar with a Rails-type humbucker in the bridge, and it looks very pretty. It has a branding all over it and a very cool trem system, very tiny. I haven't really seen anything like that before. And these guitars will not be cheap. They're retailing for around 4000 Next up, we have EVH, Wolfgang Van Halen, showing off the new signature guitar, the EVH SA-126 Special. And it is a semi-hollow guitar with a harmonica-type bridge. It comes in a few different colors. And it's quite different than EVH guitars that we usually see. I'm just noticing that the F-hole is actually an E-hole. It's shaped like an E for EVH. Very cool. Next up. We have something that a lot of people, I think, have been excited for. Rabea Massad's long-awaited artist series model from Ernie Ball, Music Man. It is a kind of strat-shaped body with two humbuckers. It has a flame maple top, a flame maple neck, and it's one of the coolest signature guitars that I think we've seen in a minute. Rabea is a great guitarist, has a great YouTube channel. Check him out on Andertons. Next up, we have Dean is coming back. Big time. After all of the lawsuits and issues that it had with Gibson in the last year, they are back. Following the zero fucks given launch of its updated Vengeance in Zero Models, they are back with their latest revitalized build in the Exile, Select. There it is. Two humbuckers, Floyd Rose, Dean-shaped headstock, neck through construction, and active pickups. Very cool. Next up, we have Angular, Cubist, and Aggressive. Cower's divisive gripe and guitar does away with all of the curvature for an early contender for the boldest guitar of 2024. So Cower Guitars, which is a Californian-based firm which is known for bold-looking guitars, has an explorer type that doesn't have the round edges. It's sharp, almost origami-looking. It has a kind of triangle or almost heart-shaped design in the middle here with these two wings on the side. And it's a very, very cool guitar, and you can pick one up for $3,500. A little bit too much money, but that's okay. Moving on, we have Magneto Guitars, not X-Men, are launching the Velvet Deluxe Lightweight Les Paul Flavored Electric Guitar that aims to elevate single cut tone. So you have a Les Paul shaped, a little bit of a telly shaped guitar with two humbuckers and binding on the neck and a very cool pickguard. And here it says the other deluxe models come in around $1,000, so they expect this to be similar. That's a pretty good price for that guitar. Next up, we have Yamaha Group acquires Cordoba and Guild guitars. Yamaha recently announced a new version of their Pacifica Strat-type guitar. And here at NAMM, we're talking about the fact that they now own Cordoba and Guild. Guild also showed off their Polera this year at NAMM. Next up, and next we have Reverend unveiled Billy Corrigan's new signature guitar. Billy Corrigan from Smashing Pumpkins has been working with Reverend for a while, and here we have a new version of his signature guitar with his very cool humbucker cover pickups, the interesting design, and all of that good stuff. And more from Reverend, they added Hot Mulligan's Chris Freeman to its roster of new signature guitars. This one has a P90 in the neck and a rail hammer in the bridge, very unique combination, and a kill switch and some other options to give this guitar a bunch of cool features that you don't usually find on other Reverend guitars. Next up, Vox delivered the APC-1, a guitar with a built-in speaker, drum machine, and effects unit. A very cool, very different paddle-looking guitar with a bunch of switches and controls on it. Um, Really cool options. They said the body shape is borrowed from the Vox Apache 2, and those go, the vintage ones, for about 600 bucks, which is about double the original price. We don't know how much this new one will be, but you have a couple different colors and a bunch of options and a big speaker on the guitar. Who doesn't want a big speaker on their guitar? Next up, Retro Lines and Hybrid Designs Vintage, if you're familiar with, has a new Revo series, which is taking a leaf out of the Squire's Paranormal Playbook. 
So what they're doing is they're taking different designs, which are kind of Fender inspired, and they're switching them up. They're remixing them. They're making them different. So you have a kind of Cabernet Tatelli here with three Jazzmaster pickups. You have a kind of Mustang here with two single coil pickups. And you have a Jazzmaster type here that's semi-hollow with three single coil pickups. A bunch of really interesting, unique stuff. And vintage are usually very affordable. You can see they go for about 600 bucks. And so I'm definitely looking forward to maybe checking one of those out for you guys. Next up, we have PV has created a smaller compact 20 watt version of its classic two amp combo without sacrificing tone. Here they have the classic 20 two amp, a very beautiful, if I might say, two amp from PV. Famous for the 5150 and so on, now they have something a little more affordable and a little smaller. Moving on, we have the cutting edge design ushers in an unprecedented era of sustainable audio engineering. This amp cabinet is absurdly slim and so light it can be worn with a guitar strap. Meet Eminent Technologies' latest innovation, the Model 22. At just 16.5 pounds, the new development can serve as an FR, FR cap for your multi-effects modeling needs, whereas a dedicated amp and cab for a regular pedal board. Look at that little guy with his little stand that is so cool. I don't think I have ever seen anything like that before. And I'm not quite sure how they pulled it off. I'm going to guess that it's not very cheap. But if I'm able to, there you go. But next month, pre-orders will be available for $1,600. Maybe I'll check one of those out for you guys. That's just really, really cool, really unique stuff. Next up, we have an in-the-box ecosystem poised to become the beating heart of your rig. Five years in the making, Two Notes monstrous genome software is finally here, and it promises to be the ultimate virtual backline. Bolstered by AI software and compatible with other amp modeling captures, the French firm has left no stone unturned with its latest digital release. So what we have here is a software suite that is defined as a carrier class adaptive channel strip for end-to-end -end tone shaping and packs a hell of a lot under the hood. Load it up and you'll find a range of amplifiers, pedals, pro quality virtual cabinets, and additionally juice post-produced effects. Future updates will see the amount of digital toys expand further still. So what we have here is Genome, a software, IR, amplifier, cabinet, pedals, all the stuff that you might want for $80. Look forward to a review of that on my channel. Next up, we have Pedals, the Fuzzatron. Jack White's third man hardware has just hopped on the DIY pedal train with the Fuzzatron, and it's even cheaper than the GHS Nauticlon. White makes a strong play for conquering the DIY pedal market with the new $75 kit. So what you have here is a type of Fuzz, a Tron pedal that is a build-yourself. Very, very cool stuff from Jack White. Moving on, we have more from Jack White. His hotly anticipated collaboration budget Donner pedal has been revealed, and it's 100 bucks. Three-in-one multi-effects pedal. You got the yellow, white stripes coloring. You have the lightning bolt design, and you have echo, phaser, and distortion. Everything that you need to sound like Jack White and the white stripes. Moving on, we have hands-free control for the entire Spark family of smart amps. You have the Positive Grids Colorful New Control X pedal, which you use to control the different Spark cabinets and whatnot, and it's giving us very big Helix vibes. Hopefully in the future, they'll have a little pedal that you don't need a Spark to control. You have all your effects right there on a little modeling unit. Next up, OCD is coming back, resurrected by Jackson Audio, finally. One of my favorite distortion pedals, the OCD distortion pedal, has been long gone. And finally, Jackson Audio is bringing full tone back for the OCD version 1.4. Very exciting stuff. We're almost done, people. Next up, we have the Big Muff. We have a double anniversary Big Muff Pi that delivers its first big box ram's head circuit since the 1970s. It's sold out in hours. Very cool, very gold. Very big, very muffy. Next up, but as everyone is talking about Jacob Collier's five-string Strandberg headless guitar. It's something that he did to try out and be different and be weird. The things that we love Jacob Collier for. 
And uh, now people are asking if it will be an actual guitar. Will we get a signature Strandberg? And I think we probably will. They don't have that many signature artists. And Jacob is on top of the world right now. Next up, the last piece of news that we could talk about is ESP and all their cool guitars that they announced this year. They have a bunch of cool stuff. They have a Strat type with humbuckers. They have a metal type here with an Evertune bridge and Fishman Fluence pickups. They have a V-type here with a similar setup, Fishman Fluence, and Evertune Bridge. They have a new single cut type here with gold Fishmans. They have a single Fishman with a Floyd Rose right here. And they also announced a new single cut with one pickup in the bridge and a very cool kind of anodized pickguard here. So that's all the news from NAMM, but one more thing that I wanted to talk about. A brand that announced a bunch of guitars during NAMM but didn't necessarily have a presence at NAMM was Sire. They announced a bunch of new guitars, including a single cut L3 with two open humbuckers in it. They have it in TV yellow, they have it in gold, in red, in surf green, and tobacco sunburst. They also announced Music Man type basses here with humbucker pickups. And here you have a roasted maple neck, but they also have rosewood necks and normal maple necks. They also announced this new V10 jazz bass with a maple burl top, which looks beautiful. And they did something similar here with a new headstock, a metal type guitar with a maple burl top, and a neck through design, which I think is the first time Sire has done that. They also finally announced a Jazzmaster type guitar, which I was hotly anticipating. I really thought that they would do that this year, and they did for 600 bucks with an alder body, maple neck, and I'm really interested to see how their Jazzmaster pickups sound because I think Sire makes some of the best sounding pickups out there. And finally, they announced a hollow body H7F in red and black. If that's what you're into, they now have an option for you. Definitely worth checking out. I think Sire makes really great stuff for the money, and I've already ordered one of their Jazz Masters to try out for you. So that was NAM 2024. It was definitely maybe a little disappointing. I think we were hoping we would maybe get a little more, more announcements, more guitars, but there's still time. We have the rest of the year for these companies to release and talk about all their new stuff. So I'm very excited for this year. It should be a good year for the music industry and for the guitar industry. But thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Please stay tuned to my channel for some of these reviews if you're looking forward to that. Or let me know in the comments if there's something that you're looking forward to that you'd like me to review or something that I might have missed. But thank you for watching. Take care and be awesome.